awareness the key to fruition in marriage all these topics that i had spoken yesterday and earlier they are interrelated and they are aimed at bringing a greater amount of awareness and an understanding in an individual as such man exists he is identified his body mind mechanism it is not only that he is identified with body mind mechanism instead he considers himself as body as long as you are identified with the body or mind or body mind realm you cannot be aware you may get the fleeting glimpses of awareness however you will not remain aware moment to moment when the situation comes you will lose the thread of awareness and without awareness your marriage life or sex life will not transform awareness sows the seed of meditativeness in you in that case your energy will continue to move outward or downwards the process of bliss requires energy to move upward through various latayafs or psycho spiritual centers and when the energy begins to reach higher it begins to express itself from a particular latayaf your process of transformation begins you are beyond body and mind realm then yesterday i had explained that when the energy remains centered as the base center sleep and food becomes the dominant element in you and at the second or the water center you are more and more interested in pleasures the worldly pleasures and at the solar plexus when energy operates from there there alone and it does not move from there then you are a doer this is a great center you are a doer and you can achieve anything in life that you want to do at the heart center the love begins to overflow you feel loving towards the other this is the center of creativity creativity without love is meaningless you love something and you enter into and creativity begins to come forward so on and so forth but this process has to continue and this can continue only with awareness you are not stuck at a particular place sometimes when the sheikh or the master sees that the disciple is stuck at a particular center he keeps on giving the hints in many ways so that the seeker can come out of that state 90% of your miseries of married life are because of this lack of awareness you take the body as your self and then you suffer you are suffering in a dream body is dream so to mind is a dream both body and mind are ephemeral because body stays for a certain period of time it undergoes the process of transformation from childhood it moves to the 
old age and then one day vanishes so to mind which is some total of thoughts keeps on changing moment to moment the body is not yours soon it will not be yours it is composed of various elements and at the end of the journey these various components will dissolve into its totality for instance you have clay pots of different variety or the candles different color different size when one day the candle maker decides to make something else what he does he melts all the candle the candle that was a reality once becomes a memory now and there remains only a large piece of wax that can be converted into any other thing the same way the potter kneads the clay molds it into different shapes and prepares it such is the nature of the body body is not yours soon it will not be yours where were you when your body was not there where were you before your birth what face did you have and after death where will you be and what will be your face will you be a man or a woman consciousness is neither masculine nor feminine if you think that i am a man this is lack of awareness indeed i am consciousness even to say this is wrong consciousness is and i am aware of it how can consciousness be divided into sex male and female consciousness has no sex organs it is your real essence however when you live in the body problems are bound to remain if you think you are a child or a young man or an old man you are again lacking in awareness how can you be old or young consciousness is neither of these it is never born never dies it is synonym with ru or light or whatever you may call consciousness is eternal it is the same unborn it remains the same unborn and unmanifest you cannot see consciousness just as you cannot see electric current but you can see its effects it is never born and never dies it remains consciousness is life itself and when you are aware of this that means awareness has come to you or you are awakened in that which is consciousness indeed is eternal within there is no age look deep within your body undergoes the aging process but your innerness is ageless this is eternal identify with your innerness and not the body only then you can attain to bliss through marriage or any act that you perform or take the mind for instance that is the second layer indeed it is deeper than the body and it is more subtle and nearer to consciousness however you take your mind to be yourself it is said as is the mind so is man this is erroneous you go on saying i i i if somebody contradicts your idea you say this is my idea or my thought and you fight for it you want it to be copyrighted the intellectual property but none of the thoughts are yours it has come once to you 
it is stayed for a certain period of time and in that you fell in love with it and you consider it as yours you may have made any variations in the recipe but the original recipe belongs to someone else you are simply modifying it for a certain occasion someone else will modify on that nobody debates for truth people discuss and debate and fight for their i my idea means me how dare you contradict i will prove that i am right this is how everybody lives nobody is bothered about truth or haq or that which is it is a question of who is right instead of truth is who is right not a question of what is right who becomes more important than what who has become more important than what but then people are identified and not only ordinary people but even the people who are religious or who are considered to be custodian of the religion a man renounces the family the children the marketplace an entire pluralistic world he goes to a solitary place in a cave or on the mountain you ask him are you a hindu and he says yes certainly i am a hindu if you ask him are you a christian yes i am a christian and christianity is the last message of god each claims that his religion is the greatest religion what is this hinduism christianity or islam is consciousness hindu muslim or christians even because of the masses the masters cannot keep away from that as i am continuing with the volume 3 which is renaissance in naqshbandi tariqat the political and this social circumstances and conditions were fast changing the other influences were filtering into yet still the masters like hazrat mazhar mir jane jana razi allah taala unu although he became very liberal in he allowed the seekers from other non islamic traditions into the fold yet still he maintains the orthodoxy the orthodox islamic trends and i had made a mention of all these things because my purpose is to bring out the spirituality beyond the narrow folds although the naqshbandi tariqat came into the subcontinent with the advent of hazrat baqi bullah razi allah taala unu but that period was dominant with muslim influence the islamic influence he was born in 1564 so somewhere near about 1600 he would have come to india then the advent of hazrat Sheikh Ahmad Farooqi Mujaddidi Alif Sani Razi Allah Taala Unu Hazrat Khwaja Muhammad Masoom Hazrat Sheikh Saifuddin Razi Allah Taala Unu Then Hazrat Noor Muhammad Badayuni Razi Allah Taala Unu By then the influence of Aurangzeb was declining the Mughal empire was on the wane 1707 It is a long period of history from 1600 to present almost a period of 5 to 600 years many changes have taken place at political social economic front in narrating the life and the works of these sheikhs 
one cannot separate from these elements because it is the circumstances and situations prevailing at a particular time that mold the teachings, affect the teachings of a particular sheikh. He clearly mentions that, but he allowed the Hindu influence. After that, Hazrat Naimullah Shah Bahraichi, who was his Khalifa, thereafter Hazrat Abul Hasan Nasir Abadi, he was the 33rd sheikh in the Naqshbandi Majhariya, Mujaddadi wa Majhariya Tariqat. And it was he who made the prediction about Lalaji Ramchandra Zilla Talaun. More prominent effect of the Hindu influence came in. And some of the disciples of Lalaji, who were not well versed in Islamic terminology, they tried to follow the complete Hindu terminology and Hindu way. There were some who were familiar with the two and they blended the two. His spirituality is neither is identified with neither of these. It is the science that deals with Ruh. That is why it is called Ruhaniyat. One that deals with the eternal, the esoteric. Terminologies you can use. Garbs, you can wear anything. During the time when Ramchandra Zilla Talaunu was in the physical form, the British influence was filtering in, but the Islamic influence was still dominant. He used to go to his workplace in a long flowing jacket going up to the knees and a trousers which is known as Sherwani. The similar kind of garb Sufi Brijmohan Lal to some extent followed. But when it came to Sufi Onkarna, the time has changed. He did not follow that garb. He went to his workplace in regular shirt and pants, the jacket, tie and all these things. His spirituality has nothing to do with the outer appearance. It has to do with the inner. Is consciousness Hindu, Muslim or Christian? It is the mind that continues to learn. Lack of awareness is if you get identified with the non-self and think it is self. Identified with all that is mind oriented. And then there is heart. It is nearest to consciousness yet is still it is far away. It is a center of creativity. A new trend is coming into you. There is body, thought and feeling. When you feel, you have to be very, very aware to feel that it is not you who feels. It is again part of a mechanism. Of course, it is nearest to the consciousness. That is why heart is closest to consciousness. Head just is in between and body is farthest away. But still heart is not you. Even feeling is a phenomenon, it comes and goes, feelings keep on changing. Like a ripple, it arises and dies. It is a mood, it exists and then disappears. You are that which always exists. You are eternal. You are in the beginning, you are now and you will be in the, ta in the end when the creation is no more and it comes to the end. You are not feeling, you are not thinking. Feeling comes and goes, thinking comes and goes. They are never the same. Like waves, these continue to rise and fall. Have you ever wondered 
What the realm is where waves of feeling and think arise. Waves need a field. And the waterbed provides a field. The ocean provides a field for waves to arise. Ocean is the field where waves arise. So too numerous waves of feelings and thinking arise on the surface of the ocean of consciousness. This ocean of consciousness is your reality. Just as waves or the ripples is not the ocean, ocean is far more than that. Ocean provides the feel for waves to arise because of the air flow between the waves. All feelings and thinking are short-lived. Move your gestalt from feeling and thinking to the ocean of consciousness that you are. Your actions, relations and everything will attain a blissful fragrance and you will continue to move in a totally a different dimension. And when this happens, you are no more. Your needs are no more. Love blossomed. Normally you are plagued with needs, wants, desires and demands. And there is no end to these. These go on mushrooming each finite moment. In reality when fulfilled desire gives birth to numerous other desires, the process continues. Just like the waves are rising onto the surface of the ocean. And when your focus moves onto the field where these waves arise, where the desires, emotions and feelings arise, you are in the field of consciousness. Awareness dawns. And in that very moment, the seed, the flower, of love begins to blossom, you attain fruition in marriage and male-female relation. Let the music play for a few seconds.